What's up everybody? So it's been a while. House has been doing some interesting things, but this is an update for you. I'm going to go ahead and break this down probably into two videos. Uh, the first one is going to be the VIC, the rustic frequency. It's got some oscilloscope shots running right now for you. And then the other one is going to be this interesting device right there on my trash can, which nobody's seen yet. That'll be later. So look out for both them videos. So let's get started. Um, <clears throat> the first thing I want to tell you is that um, um, well, I'll just show you what I got. How about that? Why well, talk to you when I can show you stuff? Um, we'll just start out with the cell. So Chris has um, been working really hard on some drawings and such, and we have now enough cells to do a complete 11 cell unit. Um, there are some extras here. Um, Chris has actually paid for the machining on these, and I'm going to be shipping some of these. Uh, I paid for some of them with donation money, and Chris covered the rest, so you can imagine it costs a little bit. Um, so thank you, Chris. So anyway, some of these we'll be sending out to um, individuals who are closely working on some of this with me and others, and always publishing their work online on the forums. So here's the, uh, the tubes. That's what they look like. Those are 32 thousandths wall thickness. And here are the cells. These are two specification. Um, turned out really well. They look really well. Guy did a good job making them. I did actually make one of these myself, and uh, quite a bit of work, really, more than I would have liked. Um, because once you get the machine set up, you're okay. But that was my issue. I just set it up. I do have, I took this apart and I did install one of these particular type cells inside of this setup. Okay, so I'll be playing with that. Um, right now the rustic frequency generator, here it is. Alright, um, I will say something really quickly about the rustic frequency generator. If you are not, you know, the best at building electronics, I would suggest building the first version frequency generator. It does everything you need to do. This does a bunch of extra stuff that I want to try to do with the gas gun. Just keep that in mind. So this is what it looks like. Um, I got, uh, let's see if I can do this out. I'm disconnecting everything. Got some nice plexiglass pieces I made up and uh, shimmed it up with some of those yellow butt connectors. I just cut the ends off of it and used those as spacers, little spacers there. And everything's still open so I can solder to it. Um, I did not install a fan on this. Um, right now I don't really think I need to. I'll do it if I have to. And uh, right now I don't think I do. So basically what you have here is the first frequency generator and the second frequency generator. And um, then you can tie these two together with gating. And you can also tie these two frequency generators together um, or you can separate them or you can invert signals for instance let's see um, alright so these two are blinking together right now if I wanted to invert them now you can't, let's see I need to slow this thing down there you go so non-inverted inverted these are the actual signals coming off the end of the chips these are the actual outputs. All right. So if I wanted to tie these two outputs together, I can flip this on. All right. If I wanted to um, separate these, all right. Now I have two totally isolated frequency generators. Okay, and I can invert also. Um, so there's that, and then gating. Okay, so this is the first generator that's doing the gating. I'm sorry, second generator is doing the gating. The first one that's doing the the frequency. So I'll show you the VIC and I'll show you my signals here. Let's get this all back where I had it. There's where I had it. Pretty close. Alright, so my VIC. Um, I decided we are still working on the core material. So I decided to go ahead and build an iron core. 
Um, so I have an iron core down in there. You can see the edge of it there. Right there. All right, I'll pull that apart later and show you. Um, but for now, that's what it looks like. Um, I wrapped some coils, tried to do some testing. I have number 30 gauge wire on here. I know I didn't use the correct color tape. Well, you all can shoot me in the foot for that one. <laughs> Replicating everything to the T, and yet I use all black tape. Anyway, so uh, these are printed out in one solid piece versus the two pieces, and then I had to mill the slot. And actually, these turned out okay. You can see there's a little bit of slop in there, just on the edges, but these were test pieces. Now, one thing about these is these have square corners, okay? With these square corners, the wire doesn't wrap very well. So I asked Fire Pinto if he could print some out with rounded corners. As you can see here, nice rounded corners. Again, this is one piece. No gluing together. And as you can see through there, they look really good inside. Everything fits nice. Um, even notched it out here so that they fit on the cores and not have to worry about if there's any inside cut. So... The, uh, that's what those are right there. Those are the new round style solid piece. They look great. Okay, off to functionality. I showed you how this function generator works. The second channel is actually for the gas gun. That's why I wanted this to set up an invert and everything. That's why I wanted the second version that we built, me and Kevin. The first version does everything you want to do just for replicating this setup. Um, so if you don't want to build this overcomplicated device, you can build the first version. Works just as well. I did put two BNC connectors that I had here for my outputs, that's for testing. And then I'll have two more down here for actual like output external triggering. So, VIC is connected. Um, the chokes are wound in the opposite direction as the primary and secondary. Okay, so remember that. I'm also using a an MDR, was it MUR? And, oh, a U1560. Alright, Stan was using a U1550, but we cannot get a 1550. Couldn't find them. 16, uh, or 1560 is just a little bit more voltage, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that, look it up yourself. So, uh, let's see, I need that. Here's what I want to show you guys. The setup um, right now is secondary going to choke two okay well, this uh, I don't know which one's in and out to be honest with you I'll have to trace that down later um, yeah that's fine I'll trace it later and then secondary is going to see one with the diode okay the cell is not connected no cell completely disconnected and what I wanted to show you is my waveform now this particular waveform only happens at a certain frequency um, the lower frequency you get this type of a waveform. Now, what's interesting is that this is an unpolar pulse. Alright, this one's down, while this one's up. That's what we want. We want that high potential output op opposing each other. Alright, that's the proper signal. And then again, if you can tune it just right, you can actually get that nice opposing sine wave there. Okay, that's only at a certain frequency. All other frequencies can see how it starts doing some interesting stuff there. So there, let's see, that's about my max frequency there, about 100 kilohertz. Uh, that right there is showing about 48 kilohertz. Alright, <clears throat> now if I change that and get it into that other waveform, it's still showing about the same amount of frequency. So, I wouldn't even reference that to be honest. I'm not sure what it's doing. It was just up on my screen. Um, continuing on here, um, really that's... I mean, about all I really wanted to show you was that waveform. I, I was, I've been working with uh, Dave. Um, I don't even know what his YouTube username is, but he just posted a video yesterday about whenever he hooked his cell up, he was able to get the correct waveform because he thought the cell was doing something. The cell was not doing something. He took the cell out of the process and still got the same waveform, and then he 
rem uh, removed some wires and changed some stuff and his whole entire setup no longer functioned the same with or without the cell. Um, I actually have the ground uh, or the reference on the leads. I actually have them right here on the ground. Now you can see without, without them connecting to the ground I still have that same result. If I were to connect this to the second side of the or the other side of my secondary here you can see because this is an oscillating system that my reference is moving so it changes my output so if I'm on this side of the secondary okay my my uh, output number two drops out if I go on the other side of my secondary output number one drops out so you can see the yard reading on the opposite side of the um, the, the, the prime there the secondary here um, just for fun uh, it just kills it, and that just kills it. Okay. So, obviously, because you're referencing itself. So, hook this back up to ground. That's the best signal I get is when it's connected to reference of the ground on the battery. Um, so, again, really what I wanted to show you was this opposing waveform. Now, a couple things I wanted to tell you, too. This setup, all the coils wrapped in 29-gauge wire. Um, and I just purchased some 30 gauge wire thanks to your guys's donations I was able to get some 30 gauge wire I do not believe 29 is the correct gauge this is from my own testing and my own experimenting okay even at no core I could not get that's what this is this is this is testing I could not get the proper readings that I would like with 30 or with 29 gauge so Hexar over at the forums doing some really cool stuff even built himself a printer to print out his own bobbins and everything. He tried to cast his own cores. Go check that out. It's pretty cool. Um, so right now, this particular VIC is um, not accurate. Um, I believe I need a little bit less turns on here to do what I want. And um, the 29 or the 30 gauge wire Hexar has wrapped on his looks really promising. The only thing is, is he could not take inductance measurements, so we don't know. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and pop this apart. Show, I told you I'd show you that core. Uh, shut this off. Uh, and you can just pop these apart. I'll go ahead and disconnect all my leads so I can just have this thing. So, just pop all this stuff apart, it comes apart pretty nicely. Again, this is just cold rolled, or cold, cold rolled steel, flat steel. And, uh, and I just cut these cores out. You can see the edges are all nice and flat. Um, now, what's interesting is that no matter if I pull these cores apart, while they're inside these bobbins or I push them together you can see that they're magnetically still attached well, there you go and um, no matter if I pull these apart or put them together if there's a gap between here or not uh, with these particular cores it doesn't seem to affect it very much as far as the output signal so that's kind of interesting so there you go um, I just I want to give you that update and then again watch my next video and I will explain to you what in the heck this thing is okay also give you some other updates um, Williams actually working on some stuff right this split second for the pulse fire to accurately do what I would like with this um, again I'll explain that later running out of time so peace and love to you all I really want to say again, thank you for your support. It's needed. Um, it's still needed. We're continuing on and doing some burn rate testing and uh, some EPG work soon. So, rest with rwgresearch.com. Blessings. Leave a comment. Um, I'll try to get back to these comments a little better. Been a little crazy. As you know, things are falling off my house lately. Um, peace out, guys. Go visit rwgresearch.com. 